So today we installed the very first rivets of the airplane. This is vertical stabilizer, uh, page 6-4, step 4, attaching the doubler to the, the uh, front spar. I didn't record this in time lapse, I recorded it real time, so I'm just going to let it play here. And I may do some voiceover uh, in a couple of places to sort of talk about, you know, what I, what I noticed and what I learned. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to let it play. Okay, so this is a very exciting moment because it is our first rivet. So, section, what are we on? So this is page 6-4, step 4. We've primed, everything's been deburred, everything's ready to go. First rivet, riveting the front spar, the doubler to the back side of the front spar. So it's four uh, countersunk rivets, or AN-426, 4-5s, and then that'll be in the bottom four holes, and then six uh, standard head, 470, 4-5s in the top six holes. So we're going to use the squeezer, and I've got it, well, know how really I'm just going to give it a squeeze and see how it does and I may need to squeeze it in further so I'm just going to try and judge all right so that is actually that might not be too bad I'm going to back it out just a little bit probably won't be enough at that point but all right you ready first rivet here we go. Ah, oh boy, that was not nearly enough. All right. So, let's try again. Still not enough. Big ribbon. Okay, so there's plenty of, plenty of. Uh, all right. Well, so that's it. <laughs> it's down. It almost kind of went sideways on me a little bit, but it's it's fine because it, it didn't go sideways. But it's uh, it was definitely a tall. Plenty of plenty of room on that rivet. It's this. It's big enough. That this gauge doesn't. It, it's real tight around it but it's still tall enough that this doesn't go over the top. So plenty of air for that one. So let's try another. All right, rivet number two. I just mean, so remember how much, how concerned I was about uh, when you squeeze the rivet down, it, the, the shop had mushrooms out and you want it to be big enough, but you want the, the part that mushrooms out to be the right diameter, but also the right thickness or height or whatever you want to call it. If the rivet doesn't have enough protruding from the hole that when it goes, if it swishes out, it's too thin or not big enough in diameter, you would need to use a bigger rivet. But if you start using bigger and bigger rivets, then when, when you go to, to squeeze it, it will <laughs> squish over to the side. So you don't want that to happen. So these are kind of right in that spot where they've got more than enough extra, more than enough tail on them. I'm not sure if you have tail, but anyway. All right, number four.
So I notice right here when I'm setting that fourth rivet that because I'm using two uh, pretty short flat sets in the squeezer and I have the adjustable ram uh, screwed pretty far out to accommodate and, and to set the height, that it's allowing the ram to sort of have some play in it. And it, uh, it dawns on me that I'd probably be better off uh, with a longer flat set and not having to have the ram screwed out as far. And so I go ahead and I switch that out when I, um, when I switch so over to the die smaller. for the standard head rivet. And so on the, on the actual moving ram part, I put a longer uh, flat set. And that ends up working a lot better. All right. So now I've got to switch over to a different, uh, different head. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm putting, uh, well, I'm putting the standard set uh, in the top part of the yoke, and I'm putting a longer flat set on the ram. And I actually have a couple of different lengths. I, I think I used the longest one first. Because I noticed we were trying to lean over a little bit. The longer one was a little too long. Uh, okay. I think I, I actually do make that one work. I just needed to screw the ram way, way down in. And so, of course, because I changed out the sets and I'm squeezing in a different type of rivet now, the 470 instead of the 426, uh, I've got to readjust everything and get everything set to the right height. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so here's a 470. That's good. So I'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit through the next four or five rivets. All right. Last one. So what I'm doing here is using the little gauge for a 1 8 rivet and making sure that the shop head has enough diameter and enough height uh, or thickness. And um, yeah, as I mentioned that earlier, I think these rivets had plenty of shank length so that that wasn't even remotely an issue. Everything was uh, perfectly fine on the gauge.
All right, that's first rivets. Ta-da. Only a million more to go. <laughs> that's good. Cool.